Okay, so let's start with the workshop and in particular with the first, uh, with the morning session. I would just to remind the speakers that they have uh, 45 minutes for the talk uh, plus the five minutes uh, for questions uh, and then I will have uh, this sort of countdown, I uh, say five, two, <laughs> zero, stop, and then there are policemen <laughs> just outside, just in case, uh, after the stop. Okay, so let's start with David Lay from the University of Manchester, and uh, I think that he is going to talk about knots in synthetic chemistry, more or less. Okay. Please, thanks. Please, David. Thanks very much. And uh, first of all, a big thanks to uh, Christian and the other organizers for uh, giving me the chance to come here and uh, uh, tell you about the sort of things that we're doing um, uh, over in rainy Manchester. Uh, and uh, I'd like to uh, congratulate them on their bravery for having a synthetic chemist uh, talk to you as the first talk of the, uh, the meeting. I promise to be gentle and not to really go into um, any detail about the methods of what we uh, uh, do, but I just want to give you a general impression um, uh, uh, about how we do what we do and the sorts of, most importantly, the most of the sorts, sorts of things that we can make uh, and hopefully to um, interest people in, and challenge people into thinking how they might want to incorporate the sorts of things that we do into their, uh, uh, into their own work and their own systems. Okay, so um, uh, I'm a, a, a synthetic chemist and the sort of molecules that we, we make are, uh, are ones which are held together, where the components are held together by mechanical bonds. And this is one example. It's a, 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 called a catenane to chemists or a molecular uh, link um, to, uh, to give it its topologically correct name and you can see that this comp the components are linked together and can't be pulled apart without breaking a, a bond. There's another sort of, of mechanically interlocked architecture that uh, some chemists are, like us are interested in and this is where a ring is locked onto a, a chain and held in, uh, it can't fall off because of these bulky stoppering groups at, at each end. And these molecules are called rotaxanes, from the Latin rota meaning wheel and axis meaning axis. Uh, and uh, uh, the reason that chemists are interested in these mechanically interlocked structures um, is because uh, of the possibility of using that mechanical linkage of the components not being able to fall apart. To, uh, to allow large amplitude motions between the components and perhaps using those uh, uh, as the basis of molecular machines. So this is an example of a link, a catenane, uh, where uh, the ring is driven directionally, uh, this small blue ring around the larger ring, um, uh, by use of a chemical fuel in exactly the same way as ATPase uh, directionally uh, rotates the components um, uh, in, in biology. Uh, this is a rotaxane, so this one's a catenane, a link. This one's a, a rotaxane, uh, and this is a, a very crude um, synthetic analogue of a, the ribosome in the cells which build, builds up the proteins in your body, and it works by having mechanical threading of this, uh, chain, uh, of this uh, a chain through this uh, ring, uh, and then this ring is able to move down the track, this one here, pick off these building blocks um, using catalytic methods and build a new chain on the, uh, uh, a, a new growing polymer chain on a, on a new part with uh, sequence information. And uh, uh, so, so rotaxanes, uh, both of these sorts of molecules, links and, uh, and rotaxanes are mechanically linked. Uh, but these are obviously topologically trivial because uh, if you just expanded the, uh, uh, the ring, you could bring it out over the, the stoppers. But of course, because chemical bonds have a finite uh, length, you can't do that in practice. And so these are mechanically uh, uh, locked, even though they're topologically trivial. And of course, links like knots are uh, topologically complex. Even if you were able to deform them, you wouldn't be able to bring about the, um, uh, uh, take the components apart. And uh, just as uh, knots are found in biology, so are, are, are links. This is an example of a, of a capsid uh, with um, uh, uh, proteins that are held together like chainmail uh, on the surface. And even uh, rotaxanes are found in biology. This is microsin J25, which is a very small lasso peptide where this ring can't get off uh, uh, this chain because of uh, these... Uh, two bulky amino acids either side that hold this ring um, in place. But how do we make these sorts of um, threaded 
uh, structures. It's hard enough to think how to thread the eye of a needle in the big world. How are we going to thread the eye of a needle when that uh, needle eye is only one nanometer apart. And the answer that synthetic chemists uh, use is to use this uh, concept of self-assembly. And I was trying to figure out how to illustrate that to you um, uh, all today. Uh, but when I got up today, in fact, I went to in the, in the guest house. I don't know if you saw that dog uh, lying around. He got to, the, uh, to my newspaper before me, uh, which, of course... Um, uh, ruined the newspaper, but it did get me thinking that, of course, a, a newspaper is a very complicated, um, information-rich structure, uh, which requires lots of effort by lots of different people to put together um, every day. You need, obviously, the writers to write these sorts of uh, the stories that we're going to need. Read. We need the uh, editors to always need editors to uh, edit. Uh, uh, the sort of things that we uh, write, make sure it's the right length and that it's all uh, uh, fits together. You need the um, copy setters to uh, set the um, uh, 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 to set the uh, uh, the stories and link them together so they fit on the page. You need the printers to actually print the newspaper, and then of course you need to send it out uh, to our shops and actually get the. Uh, 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 the newspaper over to us. So it's a very complicated, involved process which requires lots of people uh, to work on. And I was wondering, wouldn't it be much simpler if there was a better way of sort of taking the building blocks and getting them to uh, sort of uh, self-assemble and produce the kind of... No, 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 no. No, no, no. No. And get them to produce the sort of complex uh, systems that we want. And that's what we try and do in our... Uh, our lab, try and get simple building blocks, build them together, and use them to make the kind of architectures that we want. And uh, in fact, chemists have been doing this for some time. And uh, back in the 90s, uh, in, the, in the middle of the 1980s, uh, Jean Pierre Sauvage had the idea of linking together building blocks to form. Um, mechanically complex uh, architectures. Uh, this is a, a, a ligand that binds to copper uh, one ions, which are have a tetrahedral geometry that causes these to be orthogonal to each other. And if you connect the ends of these together, uh, you form a, 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 a catenane, a link, a molecular link. And um, our, one of our uh, 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 roles in, in this or achievements is to, instead of just using the metal to um, hold the bits in place, we've also used the metal as a catalyst to connect the bits together. So if you take a ring, um, put a metal in the center, it can bind components uh, either side and then not only hold them in the right geometry to uh, uh, assemble through the center here, but also catalyze the bond forming reaction uh, to give the uh, 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 the interlocked project product, in this case, uh, a rotaxane. And an advantage of this is that the, the metal can be recycled and you can form a, uh, uh, do this catalytically with only a small amount of the metal to form the interlocked uh, products. So um, uh, we developed that in our group, and then a few years ago, five years ago uh, uh, now, we uh, use this uh, approach, which is called active metal template, to assemble a, a molecular knot, a trefoil knot. And what happens here is we have a ligand strand, which is designed so that it binds two copper ions. The first copper ion binds these two residues and creates this sort of loop. Uh, and then this loop has a, a, a nitrogen atom in it, which can bind a second copper atom in the center here. And that copper atom also binds these two end groups around here and actually comp catalyzes a bond-forming reaction uh, between them so that they're joined together through the loop uh, to form a, a, a trefoil knot. And um, that was our first foray into getting interested into uh, molecular uh, uh, knots. But of course, um, uh, I'm only going to go over this very quickly, but of course, as, as everyone here knows, knots have uh, been um, made uh, since even before humans were present on this uh, planet. And the, the interesting thing uh, from our point of view as uh, people who make stuff is that, if you, is that different functions use different sorts of, uh, of knots in the big world. We have one sort of uh, interlocking or entanglements to produce woven fragments. Our shoelaces are a different sort of knot. Fishing lines are a different one and so on. And if this is true that different knots have different properties in the big world, then presumably it's also going to be 
uh, true in the uh, uh, very small world. Um, we're going to hear much more about these today, and of course, knots are found in biology and uh, polymers, so again, I'm not going to talk about uh, those things. But um, I just want to note that uh, uh, chemistry uh, has, uh, has actually a very long uh, association with uh, 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 topology, um, and uh, again, this audience will all be very familiar that uh, uh, topology started with uh, uh, Peter Guthrie Tate actually starting to tabulate uh, all of the different sorts of knots that were possible uh, to try and prove um, uh, Kelvin's suggestion that uh, knots were, uh, or atoms were different kinds of knots in the e ether, uh, which didn't turn out to be uh, so true, but it had a happy result. Uh, and this is one of um, uh, Tate's uh, early knot tables, the first seven orders of, uh, of knottiness. Uh, but the, um, really the astonishing thing from uh, uh, our point of view is that this, uh, uh, as, a, as a synthetic chemist, is that this table was produced in the 1880s, and since then, mathematicians have, have come up with uh, or tabulated more than 6 billion different sorts of knots. Uh, and until we started our work a few years ago, only two, uh, the topologically trivial unknot, so just a loop, and the trefoil knot, had ever been made by, uh, uh, by small molecule chemical synthesis. So, uh, what we've engaged in a little bit of molecular knot Pokemon, got to catch them all, and uh, I'll tell you um, a, a few of the ones that we've uh, made so far. So, uh, Savage was, um, after coming up with his route to uh, uh, a catenane, he realized that if he extended this idea of, um, uh, of entwining uh, ligand strands around metal atoms, he could make uh, more complicated uh, topology. So if we have two of these uh, metals uh, and modify the, the ligand strands, you can actually make the three crossings necessary for a, a trefoil knot, and if you put three metals, uh, you can connect the ends together to form a, a Solomon uh, knot, but more correctly called a link, uh, because it's, got, it's, it's a catenane, so it's a two-link with uh, four crossings. In it. But if you try and take this idea of making linear twisted systems uh, any further, uh, they, they don't work. So you can't make higher order uh, topologies this way because there's just too much distance between these end groups and uh, uh, you get um, crossings which aren't desired and polymerizations and so on. And so uh, a few years ago, we wondered whether it was possible to go away from this idea of using linear um, these are called he helicates, so linear helicates. Uh, uh, helicate is just the twisting of ligand strands around metal ions to form a helix, a double helix in this case. So instead of using uh, uh, linear helicates where you have this problem of large distances between the end groups, uh, could we use cyclic structures which would bring uh, the end groups uh, much closer together? And uh, if we join those together, we should be able to get these higher topologies. And there were some precedents for making these sorts of cyclic structures. Uh, the Nobel laureate Jean-Marie Lane in the mid-1990s uh, had shown that you could form uh, these sorts of um, cyclic double helicates um, using uh, 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 non-metal anions to uh, template the different sizes of, of rings. So you could get a cyclic pentama in the presence of chloride ions, and if you use sulfate, a bigger anion, you get a, a, a cyclic hexama. So Lane didn't do anything with these. He just showed that they was, were formed. But if you connect the ends of these together, you, can form, uh, uh, you should be able to form knots and links. It's technically difficult to do this, um, uh, because these end groups actually point away from each other. It's not easy to see from this. And so there's a lot of entropic problems in trying to design systems that will close the ends. And also because you've got multiple uh, end connection, connections that need to be made, uh, you need to have a way of correcting errors if the molecules connect together in the wrong way. If you don't have an error-checking step, then... Um, uh, then you'll lose and it'll be a very inefficient reaction and you'll get a lot of byproducts. So you need to have what are called reversible chemical reactions which can um, reform if they f uh, form the initial wrong, uh, 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 wrong sort of connection. And um, 
so we modified, uh, basically, we modified lane systems in order to be able to do this by getting rid of some of the pyridine groups and replacing them with an uh, imine bond formation, which is the, the, uh, the reaction of this um, carbon double bond oxygen group with an amine. And that's a reversible reaction, so it allows us to get the reversibility into it. And uh, that allowed us to take these two simple components, some iron chloride, and if you heat those up, uh, then you do indeed form a, a, a pentafol, a molecular pentafol knot. And um, it takes some time, so uh, obviously this is a complex structure, so you mix the building blocks together uh, individually, and they will react, but not initially to form the product that you want. They'll form polymers and oligomers, and so uh, the, uh, the polymers um, uh, have a long relaxation time in NMR spectroscopy, uh, and so you see very broad signals, but then uh, initially, because a, a polymeric species are present, but then if you leave the reaction longer and longer and longer, you see the sharpening of peaks, which correspond to a, a, a single uh, species, and once one isolates it, it turns out to be overwhelmingly uh, this uh, pentafoil uh, not. And this is the X-ray crystal structure, so all these atoms are uh, in correctly in, in these positions in the solid state uh, uh, crystal as proven by X-ray diffraction. And this is a, a 160 atom continuous loop, so if we start here in the middle of this blue uh, uh, region, you go over, round this metal ion, under, then over, round this metal ion, under, over, round this metal ion, and uh, under, over, round this metal line, and under, over, and uh, uh, back to um, where we started. And you can see that there's this chloride ion in the middle, uh, which templates the assembly of the, uh, uh, of the, of the whole um, structure. So, um, oh, and this is, um, you can see as it, as it rotates, you can see perhaps this helical, uh, double helical structure of the, uh, of the knot as it passes by, um, uh, the the uh, chloride ion, uh, 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 you have the um, uh, the helical uh, structure of it, it going twice around those units. So this knot uh, has some interesting properties in its own right. You'll recall that it was templated by a chloride ion. That's because um, these hydrogen atoms uh, that point into the centre of the cavity have all their electron density pulled away from them by the ion. Uh, ions that, uh, that the pyridine units are, are connected to. So uh, the centre of this cavity, of the knot cavity, is extremely electron poor. And it's exactly the right size to fit into the centre of it, a chloride ion, which is why chloride templates this assembly. And in fact, that, uh, the resulting knot is uh, an extremely strong binder of chloride ions. It's, uh, in fact, it's the strongest non-covalent binder of chloride ions that's known. Uh, and it binds chloride so strongly that uh, you have to keep it in the presence of silver salts which bind to, uh, 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 to the knot. Otherwise, it will rip chloride ions from the environment, from solvent, from glassware, from uh, any traces. So this is an interesting property uh, uh, of, a, of a knotted uh, uh, structure. Um, so uh, we were interested in this idea of using circular helicates to uh, make other kinds of, uh, of knots. And um, uh, a, a trefoil knot should be able to be made from a circular triple helicate uh, by holding the ligand strands in these sorts of positions and then just closing the ends together. Um, and uh, we done that uh, as well using uh, metal ions to template this assembly point, uh, process. These are lanthanum ions. Uh, or lutetium or europium ions uh, from the lanthanide series. And uh, this these sorts of metals are able to coordinate to this kind of ligand strand, hold three of them in a circular helicate arrangement around the metal ion. And then if we just do a reaction which closes uh, these, brings these two groups together and closes them together to form a chemical bond, then we can form a tref or not uh, uh, in a very efficient way with these sorts of species. This is the crystal structure of a derivative of that uh, uh, molecule. So again, this is... Um, showing the precise position of the atoms in the, uh, in the solid state. And you can see the, the lanthanide in the middle held together by these uh, anions. And uh, 
you can see aromatic stacking interactions and other sorts of things which stabilize uh, these units. So the sharp-eyed among you will see that this actually isn't the same ligand as we had before. It's got these methyl groups uh, attached uh, at one position of the ligand. And those uh, uh, enable you to introduce chirality into the structure. And this chirality can be used to actually form trefoil knots of just one-handedness. So this chirality controls the self-assembly of the helicate around the uh, lanthanide iron so that you only form uh, one of them. You can either have the M or the P, depending upon which uh, 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 enantiomer you start with here. And so then if you close the ends, you can either form the left-handed trefoil knot or the right-handed trefoil knot from these kinds of, uh, uh, of ligands. Um, oh, that's interesting. That didn't come up. Okay. So uh, we can, uh, um, in addition to the, um, uh, using the imine chemistry that we saw before, we can control the size of the circular helicots that we, uh, uh, that we use. And um, if we, instead of making a pentameric uh, circular helicate, we use a ligand strand that forms a tetrameric one, slightly smaller, then by joining the ends together, then we get four crossing units, but it's not a knot, it's a link. So this is actually a, a Solomon knot, or, or more correctly, a link. So this is two 64-membered rings, uh, which have uh, two, four crossings between them, so more complicated than a normal, uh, a, a simple uh, catenane uh, link. And again, this is made in one step from uh, four ligands, four amides, and in this case, four iron um, atoms. Uh, so that's um, five and three and four. Uh, so a six uh, link uh, would correspond to, if you had uh, two, two rings and connected, uh, had six crossing points, that would correspond to the uh, Star of David uh, topology. Um, and uh, that sort of system uh, could be made, but not using the imine chemistry that we developed earlier, because if we try to do the imine chemistry, uh, it didn't form, we weren't able to form cyclic hexamers. We need a cyclic hexama to use that. So we modified the ligand uh, again uh, uh, to have another pyridine group here and to use uh, carbon carbon double bonds. This particular ligand again doesn't work. It does form cyclic hexamer now, but the, the, the um, arms aren't pointing in the right directions to favor ring closure. So we had to design a new kind of ligand where the steric interactions uh, here favor twisting of the arms, which uh, direct them for ring closure. And if you take this sort of ligand and uh, you treat it with iron sulfate, which uh, uh, drives hexameric um, cyclic, uh, cyclic um, uh, formation, uh, then you form this sort of species. This is just showing the mass spectrum of this uh, species to show that it, it, it's genuinely there. That's one of the techniques that we uh, use. And these groups are now pointing to, together. And if we do uh, a chemical reaction which will join these two carbon-carbon double bonds, uh, then we can, even though there's six of these need to be joined in, in one step, that proceeds in more than 90% yield to form the closed Star of David catenate. And again, this is the X-ray crystal structure, so the unambiguous uh, assignment of, uh, uh, of the structure by X-ray crystallography. This features two 114-membered rings that have just been made in two steps uh, in about 70% overall yield, and it's got six uh, crossings. And this is, uh, again, a, a movie where you can see the cyclic... Uh, um, double helix all the way around uh, of, the, of the two rings, one ring shown in blue and one ring shown in purple. Um, so this uh, uh, knot table that I showed earlier was one of the earliest ones from uh, Tate, but it's not actually complete. It's got some knots that are missing from it, and that's because the early topologists thought that all knots could be uh, uh, written uh, with alternating uh, crossings, but that's, of course, not true. And a few years uh, uh, later, Little showed that there were other kinds of knots, non-alternating knots, and he modified Tate's tables to include other uh, kind of knots with non-alternating linkages. And uh, he put in lots of knots, but these were, in fact, uh, it turns out these are all exactly the same. Uh, and this corresponds to the 819 knot in uh, modern knot tables. 
And the 819 knot is a... a uh, a, a torus knot, so you can wrap it around a, a torus, it's chiral, and it, it's one of the simplest uh, non-alternating knots together with the two other um, eight crossings uh, uh, knots. So um, it's, this is its most symmetrical form, this is how it appears in most uh, knot tables, and sometimes you'll see it written like this, which leads to it being called the true lover's knot. You can see it in, uh, in various places, such as some Islamic art, and uh, also, I'm sure you're all aware that it's on the uh, uh, it's the symbol of uh, Boise Uncles, the uh, 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 thrash metal band. So it's clearly important to try and uh, be able to make this sort of uh, link. And in fact, Christian uh, um, and, and colleagues in the audience had shown that this was actually a preferred uh, um, a, a structure. That uh, uh, if you in, in computer simulations, if you take uh, uh, helical uh, fragments and uh, allow them to uh, self-assemble of, of the knots you get, the 819 knot is one of these. So it, it has this sort of preferred structure. Um, uh, for us, uh, we saw that there was a similarity between the um, Solomon link kind of topology that we'd made earlier from a cyclic tetramer and an 819. If you superimpose one on the other, you'll see that the only difference is actually how you connect these end groups, if you open the Solomon link and connect it uh, round here and, uh, uh, and with the same at each of those, you would convert the 819 into the Solomon link. So this is the structure we'd used earlier. And normally in the, all the systems we showed before, we're using multiple metals to form um, uh, normally an equal number of, uh, of crossings. So how can we use four metals to make eight uh, crossings? Well, the answer is that the iron atom here is um, uh, octahedral, so it can bind to three of these bidentate uh, ligands around it. And at the moment, two of those are forming the same strand. But if we design the ligand strand differently, uh, we can um, actually have that the iron here uh, uh, can hold in relative positions three ligand strands. And that's what you need in order to be able to braid uh, uh, strands and make more complicated systems. So if you take this modified ligand strand, which is uh, expanded so it can't do the kind of folding that we um, uh, saw that leads to the Solomon link, and treat that with iron uh, chloride, this is the, the sort of ligand strand that will form um, uh, uh, a cyclic tetramer. Uh, so we get this sort of species, uh, and again confirmed by mass spectrometry. Um, and then if we try and uh, join the ends together, uh, we can do that to form a uh, fully um, unsaturated uh, 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 species, closed species, in 62% yield. Uh, this is it by uh, mass spectrometry, showing that the knot should have been uh, uh, formed. The proton NMR spectra is really symmetrical, which, uh, again, uh, suggests that it's got this uh, cyclic uh, structure. Uh, the terminal group protons here have disappeared, so we know we've got all ring closures. And this is the X-ray crystal structure of that uh, molecule. So this is a 192-atom continuous loop uh, with eight non-alternating crossing points. So if we start here and we go round, we go under, under, round here, over, over, then under, under, Round here, over, over, under, under, over. I must have gone over, over, then under, under, right back, over, over, and back to the uh, start. And it's just made in two steps in 61% overall all, all yield from a, a total of um, uh, 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 four ligand strands that are triply, form a triple helicate now all the way around. And if we look at the rotating structure, you can see that now it's a triple helicate going around the uh, iron centers in order to braid them into this um, knot structure. Uh, so th these knots, the imine knots, you can't pull the uh, metal out of because the imine bonds aren't stable without the uh, metal ions. But these ones... Uh, the 819 knot, now that we've closed it with these extra pyridine groups that don't, so we don't have imines anymore, uh, we can demetallate these uh, structures and form the completely demetallated uh, knot. 
Uh, and you can see that the proton NMR spectra here is quite broad. And this is uh, a sign that there's reptation of these uh, chains through the, the knot, that you're getting slow motion of these chains as they process around the knot, like reptation in uh, 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 the sluggish movement of, um, uh, of polymer chains. So this is the, the tightest um, knotted physical structure that's known. It's just 24 atoms per uh, crossing point in the 192 atom uh, chain. And uh, it's chiral. It's got no uh, uh, Euclidean chiral elements, so no chiral centers, no chiral helix, no, uh, um, no axis of chirality, uh, nothing. But because it's a 819 knot, it's, uh, uh, it's chiral, and you can separate the knot into the two uh, enantiomers, uh, topological uh, enantiomers by chiral HPLC. And you can do circular dichroism measurements on these structures. So this is the, uh, uh, one of the knots. We don't know which enantiomer it is. And this is the other uh, knot with uh, equal and opposite uh, circular dichroism. So circular dichroism shows the, um, it's a reflection of the, uh, uh, of the aromatic rings, these aromatic ring regions of, of the uh, handedness of the environment in those sorts of systems. Um, we can also do other alternative connections. Essentially, that, that one is made by an alternative connection of the Solomon link, the cyclic tetramer uh, uh, structure. But uh, if we try doing that on the other uh, circular helicates we've got, we can generate other structures. So uh, if we connect the end groups together here, uh, they the make the closest uh, connections, we get the star of David Catanane. But if we connected these... Um, uh, with uh, uh, at every other connection, we would get a different topology, and this would actually lead to nine crossings, and it would be a composite knot, three trefoil knots of equal of the same handedness uh, connected together to form this sort of structure. And uh, if we take this ligand strand, uh, which is not able to form the closest uh, crossings, and we treat it with uh, iron two with a slightly different uh, counter iron, this time we get a cyclic. Uh, Hexima, and if we connect the end groups together by uh, olefin metathesis, we get uh, this species. And this is the X-ray crystal structure of uh, uh, the first composite knot, this nine-crossing molecular uh, uh, composite knot. Uh, as you can see from the cartoon, the, uh, these strands uh, go back, and it's quite hard to go through to do uh, this, all this over-under thing. So uh, I just have to take my word for it that this is a 324-atom continuous loop with nine alternating crossings, and it's made in two steps in 65% overall yield um, from uh, the route that I, I mentioned. Um, we can also uh, do this same trick of being able to uh, demetallate the systems uh, with the pentaphor knot by modifying, instead of you do, making the pentaphor knot with imines, making it with uh, uh, this all-carbon skeleton that we did before. So if we take this ligand strand, put chloride in the center of it, which uh, templates it for a five-membered uh, circular uh, pentamer, close the end groups together, we can get this sort of uh, pentaphor knot, which um, we can now demetallate. Uh, this is the X-ray crystal structure again, very similar to the uh, previous uh, pentaphor knot. And uh, if we demetallate it now, then we can get the, uh, uh, the metal-free, so the uh, uh, pentaphor knot. And again, this is chiral. Uh, uh, it has no chiral centers, no chiral axes, no chiral helix, no, uh, nothing. It's just chiral by virtue of its topology. You can separate it into the two enantiomers. And... Uh, uh, again, get, uh, this is the circular dichroism spectra of the, uh, of the two knot enantiomers. And um, we can take this free ligand and actually put uh, different metals into it to form slightly different tighter and not so tight uh, knots. You can't do it directly with these metal ions to do with their, uh, uh, their uh, coordination um, dynamics. But if you put in uh, zinc, which has very fast coordination uh, dynamics, you can form this sort of structure. And uh, then you can replace the, the zinc ions one by one and actually make a whole series of different knots with different colored metal ions in iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, uh, uh, zinc, all in this center. Um, 
and these have uh, different kinds of, uh, uh, of properties. The, um, uh, the, the center here is, is, is different sizes now the cavity and it has different um, uh, electron density at the center so it binds anions with different uh, stabilities. And we can use these sorts of, um, oh, this is just a comparison of the IMI method and the other method that we developed. So this works, um, uh, it's just one step synthesis, but it only works well on, a, on, on just a few milligrams uh, a scale. And of course, you can't, as I mentioned, you can't pull the metals out of this system, otherwise it will just fall apart. So it's, it's, it's receiving, you can't separate it into two different sorts of uh, knots. But this system here, uh, although it's two steps, uh, the yield's very high. Uh, you can make grams of it. Uh, we can uh, pull the metals out and it's completely stable. You can resolve it into its enantiomers and you can put different metals uh, back in which have different properties. And we can use the fact that this, um, uh, this topology uh, uh, limits the, the sort of structures that can be uh, formed by these ligands to do catalysis. So if you just take this uh, uh, knotted ligand with no metals in, it's not a, ca a catalyst for this chemical reaction. But if we bind zinc ions to it uh, and we use BF4, then this cavity is empty. BF4 can't get inside of it. But if you remember, this cavity binds halide ions like bromide and chloride extremely strongly. So it will strip the bromide off here once these metals are in uh, and uh, catalyze this chemical uh, reaction. Um, and uh, the knot on its own won't do it because these protons, uh, this cavity won't bind anions unless the metals are present to suck all the electron density out of the cavity. So this is allosteric. Uh, catalysis. It requires the binding of these five metal ions in order to do the catalysis at a different center here, the anion binding center. And you can go around in this sort of sequence. And you can use this to also catalyze other kinds of chemical reactions, use this uh, species to pull uh, bromide ions off other carbocations, which and this species can then catalyze other chemical reactions in its own right. So this is initiating catalysis through an, an anesthetic binding mechanism with a knot. And the knot architecture is crucial here. If you just take ligand strands, which are identical but aren't joined together to form the knot, they can't do this because uh, when you add the zinc, they won't form this knotted structure. And even if you do it with iron, then you end up with chloride in the center here, and so it won't do the catalysis then. It's only possible because of this knotted ligand strand. Right, I think you've had enough of, um, uh, uh, of synthetic chemistry. Uh, these, are the sorts of, uh, these are all the knots that I've talked about uh, 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 today. Um, when we started this work, uh, chemists had only, um, in the previous 15 years, they'd only made one different, uh, uh, one sort of uh, knot, Savage's trefoil knot, uh, and other groups have made trefoil knots as well. And in the last uh, few years, that number of uh, Pokemon knots has been increased a little bit. I didn't talk about this one today, and uh, there's a couple of others uh, that we're working on that uh, we have knots that, again, I didn't mention. Uh, why, why is this possible now? Well, the advances in, in synthetic chemistry now make these sorts, of, uh, 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 these sort of structures realistic targets for synthetic chemists. It, it really wasn't possible to make these sorts of things uh, 10 years ago. The synthetic methods that chemists developed uh, just weren't up to, uh, uh, weren't up to it. But, um, frank and frankly, this embarrassing position that chemists have been in, that there are six billion known knots and chemists can only make one, uh, that's, uh, uh, it's great that now that uh, we're beginning to show that we, we've got a bit more ability than that. Knotted structures are, of course, abundant in nature, as we know. There's got to be reasons for this, and that's really the... Uh, reason that perhaps it's interesting to make these kinds of structures uh, because now for the first time we hope that it will be possible to look at the consequences of tangling of entanglements and topology and the properties of um, materials we, we hope and we'd be interested in collaborating with people who have got ideas of um, measurements that they might want to do on uh, chiral or non-chiral uh, not pulling with various things I, I see that there are other people are doing this at, at, at this meeting uh, and, and so on so thanks very much indeed uh, uh, for having me. Uh, these are the people um, 
uh, uh, who have done all the uh, work. They're a real uh, great bunch from um, all over the world, and I'd like to thank them for their imagination, their creativity, and their hard work. You'll see many of them are, uh, are not from the UK, and one of the, the big tragedy of Brexit is not the financial problems that it will bring to the UK or, or even the effect of funding on science. It's not the effect of peace and stability that, will, uh, uh, that it could have on, on Europe. But it's the, uh, the, really it's the freedom of movement uh, that uh, is, the, is the tragedy for the, uh, the UK. Uh, not just because we are allowed, we're able to attract some of the best young scientists to the UK, but also because of the uh, richness that it's brought to our culture and society for uh, the last 40 uh, years. Um, sorry to end on a bad note. <laughs> and I'd uh, just like to thank you again for having me, and uh, 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 I look forward to the, the rest of the time. Thanks. <laughs>